sensor saturation. Great. So, encompasses a couple questions that I keep getting all the time. Happy New Year! Hey, I brought the fireplace back. Everybody seems to love the fireplace. A lot better to look at than my ugly face, right? A silicon wafer sensor technology. And as opposed to uh, being able to shoot uh, high speed uh, sync to uh, crush ambient illumination, a lot of people have asked me, why couldn't you just dial down the ISO, or why do camera manufacturers not let you dial the ISO way down to, say, I don't know, ISO 5 or 50? And the answer is rather simple. It's actually slightly complex, but in simplex, the limitations of this stuff, and it doesn't matter what camera you have or who the hell made the sensor, whether it be Panasonic, Tower Jazz, or Sony, the limitations of <laughs> lithography and uh, semiconductor silicon wafer technology is limited. <laughs> There's such a thing as photosite well capacitance. And until there is a photosite level, and that is possible in the future, however, the complexity is almost mind-boggling because you'd actually have to have adjustable capacitance where each photosite would actually clock out and uh, tell the feed that, hey, I'm full, and that way you'd actually get incredible dynamic range. I mean, the future potential of possible. And this, of course, will not be implied at uh, photosite uh, level um, capacitance and uh, photosite well capacitance, but in uh, adaptive uh, resistance technology, as Panasonic themselves patented it, patented, like, say, for example, you're to shoot a uh, backlit woman. Um, with a bright uh, sun behind her, I mean, without using fill flash to actually raise the level of your subject illumination, you, uh, the uh, camera itself would uh, see that uh, you're clipping the highlights and it would immediately clip uh, any additional uh, registering of light from the bright areas and would continue to uh, take light in from the dark areas so you could have, uh, on the background, what would be, say, one one-thousandth of a second exposure at a given f-stop and ISO, and uh, the uh, subject illumination would be, say, one sixtieth of a second um, correct exposure, that it would actually time out on uh, the capacitance of the specular highlights and continue to uh, clock in um, the, uh, the uh, information from uh, the shadows. And this is the basis of the patented uh, Panasonic technology that I've actually been talking about now for two years. I said it was coming long before the uh, information uh, came out about uh, Panasonic uh, patenting that technology, which that information was released like a year and a half ago. But you can't have really uh, low ISO uh, uh, sensors. Well, you could, actually. This is not exactly true. But the problem would be is that it would create such a crappy camera that no one would want it. Well, how so? Well, you'd have a camera that you could shoot at really, really, really low ISO, which basically means it would be a very inefficient, half-blind sensor. It's like, well, that's great. You know, I could uh, shoot it, uh, you know, if I got a strong backlit, and uh, instead of doing HSS photography and uh, fill flash, I could just shoot at, like, ISO 5. The only, problem, <laughs> the only problem with the sensor like that is that a blind sensor is always a blind sensor, and then you'd have a uh, camera that is useless in any form of low light. So that would be wonderful, except it would really suck at the same time. But then you still have a disparity of, you know, five, six plus stops of difference between your ambient illumination, like the person that is backlit and... Uh, uh, excuse me, your subject illumination, which is uh, backlit by the ambient. And so everything, you know, flash, uh, uh, as, as they say, a rising tide raises all boats. There is absolutely nothing, and this is the other question, and it's not really a question, I, it's a statement, is that uh, a viewer of mine, a nice lady, um, she was told by some ignorant uh, knuckle-dragging moron that she didn't need a speed light for her Fujifilm camera. And she'd ordered a Godox a speed light off my recommendation. And uh, some guy on some Fuji uh, board or, you know, some place where a bunch of uh, talking morons hang out to say, Oh, you don't need a speed light. You just need to uh, uh, raise your ISO up. Yeah, that's the ticket. It doesn't work like that. 
the the best lens and the best camera on earth are insignificant compared to a sensor saturation and the only way to get sensor saturation because true professional photography and 98 percent of it outside of architectural and uh, landscape photography where speed lights and studio strobes are basically useless is a sensor saturation and the only way you can get true sensor saturation is by means of employing a speed light or a studio strobe at the very least a speed light which isn't a whole lot of power and you don't have a whole lot of options with the speed light um, but nevertheless it's incredibly useful sensor saturation is everything you can overcome nearly everything by uh, bringing artificial lighting into the uh, scenario artificial lighting or speed light uh, photography or studio strobe photography actually fixes basically every issue imaginable not all of them but most issues associated with photography but the limitations of the silicon wafer technology does not allow you know you could but then the camera would have just horrible low light performance but there is a phobia out there about uh, speed lights and uh, artificial lighting and this really is the only reason why so many people and I know LEDs are all the rage for power conservation and the fact that LEDs last forever I get that for home use and stuff but LED LED photography or uh, LED photography is is pretty douchebag. I mean, it's uh, it's unless you're talking about uh, ten feet or less. I mean, you have white balance issues. It, it's just not enough power. It's it's not. I mean, it's perfect for. I mean, it's necessary for videographers, but those uh, LED panels for videographers are have a lot of controls for white balance and they're insanely expensive. They're real deal video uh, LED lighting, but LED lighting unless it's really close in is pretty freaking useless um, I kinda get sick every time someone talks about uh, uh, a stupid roto light invention or uh, there's no invention it's just a freaking overpriced uh, LED panel um, just a waste anyway sensor saturation is everything I wish people would stop telling other people to not you know just crank up your ISO you don't need a speed light you know even if you do crank up your ISO it doesn't change the fact that the image would be unsaturated and uncontrasty. There is nothing in this world more useful than a speed light. Well, except for a studio strobe, but those are, you know, heavy and require light stands and require power packs. Either that or a 50-foot extension cable to the nearest outlet you could stick it into. But uh, this is the reason why sensors don't have ISO 5 or ISO 10 capabilities. The limitations of this uh, silicon semiconductor lithography technology is as it is. Um, the next few years you're going to see a lot of, because uh, I told you all these camera companies are always working five years ahead of whatever the hell they were, whatever the hell it is they've released. I got some uh, classified information about uh, what Nikon and Fujifilm are working on collectively in Japan. However, I can't repeat that. I don't think. Well, I've actually got two sources for that information, so I can, and I'm going to do that in the next video, but I'm not going to be very specific. I'm going to be hyperbolic. Since one person gave me the information, and they never said it was classified, even though the other person did, then I think I'm okay. So, sensor saturation is everything, and this is the reason why we can't shoot at like ISO 5 or 10 as opposed to HSS photography and still there would still be a dynam dynamic range disparity between subject illumination and ambient illumination that has to be understood everything is really about dynamic until there is adaptive resistance technology on the market in uh, prosumer and professional cameras everything is about dynamic range compression you're exposing for your ambient and you're raising your subject illumination with artificial lighting um, means all the difference in the world. People don't realize that fla all flash photography is basically a double exposure. You're exposing the uh, shot, whatever the shutter speed is, to your ambient illumination and then secondly, or rather firstly, depending on how you look at it, uh, with your uh, speed light illumination. Something that uh, should have been emphasized, you know, I don't think they even told me that in uh, photography school. I mean, it was kind of obviously understood, but someone should have said, you know, all uh, flash photography is a double exposure photography. Well, how so? Well, let's explain that and think about it. This is how, for example, you if the ambient illumination is basically nothing, you could shoot a uh, one second uh, exposure so long as your T1 time flash pulse duration was incredibly fast because 
true uh, shutter speed is not the uh, shutter speed in your camera, but the uh, flash pulse duration from your Speedlighter Studio strobe. And uh, that's something else people don't consider, too. It's like, well, my shutter speed's too slow. It's like, I'm going to do flash photography, and, you know, I'm at a 60th of a second. I'm gonna... No, you're not. Everything's based upon pulse duration of your speed light or strobe, not upon the shutter speed of your camera, if your ambient illumination is not that much. Anyway, thanks for watching. Happy New Year, and uh, catch you later.